Good afternoon, everyone. This is Chaitali Bhatt from the European Bureau of Aviation and Defense Universe based out of Cyprus. In the Women's Week, no better a subject than women empowerment. And what better than a woman in a male bastion profession, which is now opening its wings to let the women fly. We have with us today, retired Wing Commander Rina Kumaria, who will trace her journey as a girl who dared to dream, join the Indian Air Force, served for a reasonable period, then retired and is now creating her pitch for the second innings in India's Zooming Airlines Indigo. Reena, welcome to ADU's chat room. And now I request Sangeeta Saxena, editor, Aviation and Defense Universe, to have a nice chat with Reena. Welcome, ma'am. Thank you so much, Chitali. Reena, welcome to uh, ADU. It's wonderful. What a journey to trace, you know. Our audience is going to be very happy listening to what you have to give them, you know, because it is the Women's Week and we thought, you know, who better than women who have really flown and uh, entered professions which were never our forte. And then suddenly they've become our own. So we've, uh, you know, we just thought, you know, let, let this be a motivating session for all the young women, for all the married women who feel that you don't have a career after marriage for all those women who you know have feel that they wanted to do something but it's never too late so let's make it fun times and motivational times for everybody and uh, starting with you know how did you decide to go into the air force uh thank you so much for giving this opportunity uh ma'am uh, to interact with you uh, such uh, high profile and uh, inspiring lady herself uh, and uh, sharing my thoughts and views and journey with all those uh, young girls uh, who would if learn some even one thing from me I would be really uh, thankful and uh, uh, it will be a very uh, moment of pride for me. Uh, now coming to the question, uh, it was uh, my early childhood. Of course, uh, then it was not about uh, Indian Air Force. Uh, I was one child who was truly fascinated with the uniform and good governance, I would say. And uh, then when I was growing, I watched uh, serial Uran. It was about an IPS officer. and. Uh, which made my determination uh, to be an IPS officer. And I started preparing for that. And uh, later, uh, when I joined college, then I came across uh, this advertisement. Uh, while that time, I had already cleared my uh, prelims for civil services. And now uh, it was a uh, golden opportunity uh, to be one in uniform uh, with call letter in my hand and uh, two birds in bush was uh, uh, to be an IPS officer, which was still uh, a little distance away because I had to clear my mains and then interview. So uh, this is how I decided to be part of it. And uh, it just happened to me. Uh, but uh, yes, it was sure that I have to be in uniform. Right, that, but that's that's a wonderful motivation. Did it come to you from the family? Is your fa family a uh, Fauji family? Uh, not exactly. Uh, I grew up in Punjab, uh, on in a border township, uh, which is very nearby to Pathan Court. So uh, I had seen most of the time army moving around whenever we used to. Uh, go to main highways, army uh, trucks were crossing and I used to wave them. And uh, yes, I was an aviation enthusiast, I would say, from very childhood. Whenever any aircraft from Pathan Court Air Base would uh, come over my township, uh, I would run outside and wave uh, onto that, never knowing that one day my I would be posted at Air Force Station Pathan Court and my husband would be one who would be flying uh, one of aircraft uh, which has taken off from uh, that base. So this is uh, how was motivation uh, 
I got into and um, my brother was the first person I would say who had joined army and uh, looking at him even uh, I got uh, uh, focused towards military services and uh, later I was one in uniform. That's lovely, you know, that's a lo that's real, truly inspirational, Reena. Because see what happens, girls uh, they, coming from a civilian background, uh, for them, you know, to just see that because they are staying near an air force station or near a containment, and uh, how many of such girls in small towns would have, you know, thought about picking up a career in the forces, but did not know how to do it. So mm -hmm. God, God, is, God was really full of blessings for you. Uh, tell me one thing. Uh, definitely you would have seen an advertisement and responded and then, you know, there was a process. So how did you prepare for the entrance? Uh, Ma'am, as I just told you, I was uh, as such preparing for my uh, civil services examinations. Uh, uh, for my written exam, of course, uh, it was anything and everything which came my way, I used to read. Uh, competition success was that time one good uh, uh, magazine which... Uh, I used to go through uh, all newspapers uh, and topics uh, of discussion with our classmates. So I was preparing for that. So uh, clearing written exam, uh, it was, I found it easy. And then came uh, SSB. For that, I bought one uh, small book, uh, which uh, before I went there, I had gone through. And that was it. And uh, I was myself throughout. And I think this is what helped me. And there was nothing uh, more I knew. Rather, I did not check anything with my brother also. Because uh, truly speaking, I had not told uh, that I was appearing. Uh, because uh, my family supported me for whatever I wanted to do. And uh, I just filled the forms. I cleared my exams. And I just told that I'm going for this interview. And it was in Dehradun. So uh, from Chandigarh, it was not uh, far away. I went myself and uh, did all it by myself and came with the good news back at family. So this is how Wonderful. it just happened. Wonderful. And what was the reaction of your family when you told them you, that, okay, you were cleared and you were going to get become a commissioned officer in the Air Force? What was uh, the reaction of your parents and your siblings? Yes, of course. Uh, somewhere they already uh, knew that uh, I would be one in uniform. Which one it would be? That was the question mark. But uh, yes, it is uh, what they had expected. Uh, but that uh, spark in my father's eye, which I saw that day when I uh, told this, I cannot forget that. Uh, he was so happy and thrilled. Uh, I had never seen that kind of uh, charm and happiness in his eyes, which I can never forget. I, I, I gave him that happiness. I, I feel blessed. Wonderful, wonderful, absolutely. Daughters, of course, are the most important for the fathers. I'm sure he would have been the happiest on that occasion. And uh, Rina, tell me one thing. You went into training. No. So was the training a common one for you and the men officers or were you trained separately? It was common. Uh, there was no difference in our training uh, pattern and uh, uh, schedule. Uh, only difference uh, was in a uh, few uh, training uh, time, uh, timings. Like if for one... Uh, round of uh, run like it is 1.6 kilometer uh, running so maybe for boys it was for uh, six minutes and for us it was eight to ten minutes and uh, but uh, it is again on your abilities and capabilities uh, like I always uh, could finish within six minutes as uh, my uh, other uh, uh, colleagues could do and uh, I feel proud of that and uh, practice makes a man perfect a woman perfect so uh, other girls also other uh, women cadets with me also did equally good uh, from the uh, day they had started 
and where they reached was commendable. And how many women were you there in the batch? Uh, in my course, there were uh, eight. And uh, in my senior, I think uh, six girls were there. So okay. now induction uh, has increased. There are more women cadets in the academy. And uh, yes, in our time, uh, there, were, there were few. Uh, so and you trained in the academy for how many years? For one year. It was one year training and uh, all same uh, with such very uh, small uh, differences which they had to keep because initially women are physiologically different than men and then they train us and then uh, we get groomed and uh, equally equipped with everything. Right. And uh, what was your first posting station? Uh, first posting was Jodhpur. Uh, it is the, uh, one of the biggest air base of Indian Air Force. And the uh, journey was quite exciting. It was a uh, truly learning experience at first posting. And uh, I learned not only through my seniors, uh, but my subordinates uh, as well. And uh, Things which I learned there are uh, remembered always very good uh, memories uh, because first posting is very close to heart. And uh, yes, there I learned how to be an officer. Uh, otherwise, uh, still that uh, time when you are cadet, yes, you do feel, but when you are in field, uh, in front working as a leader uh, with so many men, uh, that's the time when your true leadership qualities uh, are to be there and uh, you are to behave like one, you are to take challenges and uh, this is all uh, what I learned there. I, I think it must have been very exciting, you know, youngsters when they join, it's uh, for them, you know, one of those most exciting moments. You've donned the uniform, you've become an officer. And uh, did you feel any difference in the sort of assignments were, which were given to you and, and which were given to your male counterparts? No, uh, not in Indian Air Force, I would say. Not with, uh, I have not noticed anything. Uh, no discrimination, I would say. Uh, here, I would like to say when, uh, as a professional, you prove your worth, uh, organization recognizes irrespective uh, you are a male or female if you are capable they will give you that responsibility and uh, I was uh, fortunate that uh, whatever men could do I was assigned with those uh, duties and tasks and I uh, completed them uh, uh, as desired by my organization and seniors Right. And uh, was yours a short service commission, Reena? Yes, ma'am. When I joined, it was a five years commission, uh, which was extended to six years and uh, then was extendable to four years. But while uh, I was uh, uh, in that stage of my career, a uh, few women officers had approached uh, uh, court uh, for permanent commission. So one fine day, I got that letter from Air Headquarters uh, asking my willingness uh, for permanent commission as I was meeting all other criteria. Uh, and of course, uh, this is what even I wanted. So I, I got a permanent commission uh, by God's grace. Wonderful. Very nice. That was a real development in the Indian Air Force as far as women's, uh, women's yes. uh, career plans were concerned, you know. So I think it was very nice. And uh, very uh, crucial, very prime years uh, we give to our organization. We feel so close uh, and uh, learn so much. It is training for years also, which has gone through. Uh, so I think that was a good move. And uh, see, trained officers, any organization, trained employees uh, should not uh, be let go like this. So this was a good uh, decision and uh, of course I'm a beneficiary.
Yes, absolutely. I agree with what you're saying. And uh, as far as courses were concerned, uh, were they the same uh, which you are, you know, in the, the further courses? So, when, you know, in the, arm, uh, in the armed forces, you do have these mid-level mid courses. So, were they the same for all of you? Were you also uh, yeah. uh, permitted to take the staff college exam? And, I mean, was it uh, common for everybody, for men and women yes, both? Yes. Uh, initial years, it was uh, not for uh, women officers. It was not for short service commissioned officer. But with PC, with permanent commission, mm. everything was uh, same. And uh, except staff college, which was not earlier part of, uh, we were not able to. But now, uh, yes, uh, it was after PC, it was uh, uh, acceptable uh, for organization to go and opt for these courses as well and uh, now that we are saying that now and uh, we're talking of then then in that case what are the changes you see for the women officers in the indian air force since you joined to the current day because we also have fighter pilots now you know yes so what are the sort of changes you see have they been gradual being inside see we see from outside but you were inside the profession and you saw it from inside. So could you just tell our viewers something about the changes which happened over the years? Uh, yes, we. I have seen changes. Uh, though when uh, we joined, there was no discrimination if, uh, at any stage which I could feel. It was all the same uh, at stations also. Yes, uh, because there were very few women uh, officers at any given station. Like at Lay, I was the only one uh, when I was posted there. Uh, I remember first posting, first appointment. And uh, in my team, there were so many uh, 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 employees who, if I would have met in civil, would have called them uncle. But now they were my subordinates. And... Uh, they came to me and told, ma'am, aapke jitne to hamari beti hai. Uh, see, accepting uh, such things, such statement gracefully and uh, giving them impression that yes, though I'm younger, but I'm now on a responsible position where I'm leading you. And uh, uh, this is what uh, I learned on job and it was quite satisfying. But... Uh, you get respect only if you are professional. So there uh, you cannot uh, be in uh, your boots of male or female. There you are only an officer, which, uh, which this approach helped me. And uh, now, uh, gradually over the years, people have accepted uh, women. There were few uh, whom... Uh, when we used to interact, I could sense that they were not very comfortable in being commanded by uh, a woman. But gradually, uh, this fact has been accepted uh, by one and all. And uh, I think uh, that has made uh, uh, women officers to go forward in this career rather easier. Right. And our promotion boards, uh, same for men and women candidates, uh, yes, the right. officers? It is, it is. It is same. Everything is same. Uh, um, we are considered at par. And uh, now there are uh, many uh, women officers uh, who have made it to uh, next uh, ranks. Uh, there are many group captains uh, now who are commanding uh, also. So uh, everything is same after uh, permanent commission has been approved uh, and now girls are moving higher up in chain of command. What, what do you feel are those three qualities which any woman should have to have a career in the armed forces? Um, to be... Uh, one has to be really courageous, determined. Courageous, I would say, uh, she should be ready to take on all those jobs which generally people think only men can do. Uh, she needs to be determined because uh, maintaining that poise and uh, going ahead with uh, what tasks you have been assigned with, uh, you cannot give up. 
and uh, I strongly feel that uh, women generally have this trait inbuilt by God in them. Uh, they have to be uh, resilient, which they are, perseverance, they have to be adventurous, uh, they have to be sophisticated, they have to be uh, disciplined, they need to be multitasked, and most important, as I told, they need to be really professional. When they are professional, when they know their job, uh, they will be respected as an officer. Yes, absolutely. And you know, now NDA has uh, opened its gates to women and we are going to have the first batch of women, you know, taking the exam for NDA. And uh, then, you know, we'll have the first batch which goes in this year. So yeah. it, it's a absolute great, great moment for uh, women who want to make the career in the armed forces. Yes. Uh, would you want to give such girls, young girls, uh, some advice on to how they should prepare so that, you know, NDA is, uh, uh, it, it's a very old uh, examination. Boys are used to it. It's known to be a very heavy examination. So do they need to prepare themselves physically, psychologically and academically? Uh, is this, are there some tips which you would like to give? Uh, yes, ma'am. It is uh, true that uh, for any NDA candidate, I would say physical, psychological, and uh, emotional quotient is much superior than uh, any average individual. Uh, so girls who are uh, really keen and willing uh, to take on uh, that kind of uh, uh, challenges, uh, which of course will be uh, strain uh, will be physically and uh, emotionally strain them uh, will only come forward uh, to appear for these exams. It is a commendable job uh, which our nation uh, has done and uh, girls who would be going for it, I would say that uh, uh, with correct training and uh, determination, anything uh, can be done. History says that our uh, women are uh, uh, so courageous and they have that stamina to face any kind of challenges. If uh, uh, Meera Bai Chanun, that weightlifter uh, in uh, category of 49 kgs could lift 200 plus of weight with correct training, why not those girls uh, who have got that uh, military temper uh, can do this? They can very well do that. And uh, yes, they should be uh, ready to take on uh, that physical strain, physiological changes, which uh, may uh, deter them initially. But if they already prepared mentally, they know about uh, that how physical uh, exertion can cause few changes in you. Uh, I think they'll be able to handle and uh, go along with the tough training uh, very easily. I know. And now before we, uh, you know, move towards the end of the show, my last question to you, Rina, is that uh, you have joined a career in the civil uh, and you are a part of the most zooming airlines we have, Indigo. So how is the difference you feel between the two careers and uh, uh, has your career behind of the Indian Air Force been, uh, you know, a great pusher to you in the sort of civilian environment uh, you are at the moment? Uh, yes, ma'am. I would say, um, uh, yes, it, uh, it helped me. Uh, being an aviation enthusiast and uh, with extensive uh, knowledge of uh, what all is required to make a plane fly and a mission accomplished, uh, what support services role is uh, uh, behind the scenes. Uh, so this knowledge uh, helped me uh, to transit very easily in civil aviation. And uh, it is only that now uh, cause is different, but all other requirements are same. 
and uh, with this background uh, with my husband being an aviator uh, i i felt uh, closely for uh, civil aviation and it was a natural uh, transition uh, natural choice of mine to transit to civil aviation um, because uh, efficient and effective operations uh, is what we learned and what all efforts are required uh, to make it happen how discipline and uh, uh, adds to uh, the operational efficiency is uh, what is helping me in understanding now civil aviation and my contribution to it right thank you very much reena wonderful to have you on the show i'm sure that the young girls who are all listening would be heavily motivated and uh, you know also that uh, when you know when we see professionals like you it also gives us a real elan you know it tells us that look women can do it and uh, you know this is the thing we wanted to put forth that women are getting empowered yes but what is the level of empowerment empowerment should happen in the fields where they have not been earlier which were male dominated fields which were absolute absolutely male bastions so that is wonderful you know to know uh, from you that uh, women are making their places into uh, an arenas which are really very nice so looking forward to you know getting all this sort of uh, information for our viewers and as and when you proceed into a civil aviation career next time we hope we'll get to talk to you about that and let the girls know that what it is to make a career in civil aviation military aviation and civil aviation are uh, you know absolute first cousins and uh, they move hand in hand and uh, they've been together in op you know very major operations of the world i've had both of them together so it's just wonderful you know to understand all this from you and now we go back to cyprus where chitali is sitting in the studios waiting for us and uh, chitali we are back and after this wonderful conversation and uh, if you can you know go ahead with what you felt about the conversation thank you so much reena thank you so much uh, for sharing your beautiful experience with us definitely you got wings to fly and you're still flying in a different way not in the military aircraft anymore but yes in the corporate world uh, we wish you all the best in this journey as well and uh, i'm thank sure you so much. all your talks uh, are definitely going to give a lot of motivation to the upcoming girls here thank you so much and it's a, it was a pleasure talking to you thank you so much thank thanks ma'am Have a nice thank day ahead. So thank you, Chitali. Bye. Bye. Good Irina, thank you very Bye. much. Thank you.